Sleepy Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair, me. I'm super excited about this. One thing that I'm sure a lot of you did not expect was for me to be back in XPW Wrestling. And XPW Wrestling has this amazing show this week. And I can't believe how different it is. Like Rob, when he takes shit to the extreme, Rob Black goes way to the extreme. Woo! Um, so I don't know if you guys have been watching the matches. If you don't come to the shows, it's on Fight TV, F-I-T-E TV. The girls in the death matches are bleeding more than the guys. It's insane. So I have a good feeling Rob's going to be giving um, the WWE a super hard set of standards to follow. But joining me today is the very mysterious, gorgeous um, Kat Martini. Dude, this should work. Because, like, I'm telling you, you have like super glowy, like gorgeous blonde Barbie skin. Now, when I look at Kat Martini, she reminds me of this hot, crazy blonde in this movie from years ago with Christian Slater. I don't know which one of the Arquette sisters it was, but it totally reminds me of you. So, Kat Martini, I know, is the mysterious, gorgeous blonde that all XPW fans have like come to really want to know more about. So, I decided to make her hop onto the crazy train with me. Woo! Thank you so much for joining me today or this evening. No, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're like this mysterious thing. You're like as mysterious as Angeline, the Billboard Queen. So everyone was <laughs> asking all these questions. I'm like, let me just bring her on here. So this is the weirdest thing. Like, how did you even get involved with wrestling? I know you liked it growing up, but yeah tell us about that part because it's really weird it's funny because you gotta think me and robert have been together for like a little over 10 years and so yeah so we met back and he would like you know get the crazy rob black and blah blah blah, blah. and like i have no idea because when i met him i was 22 and yes so like we're 16 years apart so that's like one thing already. So it's like, I had no idea. So one of my friends was like, have you ever worked with Rob Black? Um, do you know him? He's this guy, he's that guy, he does all these things. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, because when we met, this is part of from another industry. So this is from like, you know, that industry. Yes. And so I, I watched wrestling growing up, but like, my mind only stopped at WWE, like that's our WWF, whichever way you want to talk about it. Um, so like I grew up in the attitude era, so that's all I've known. And when he's like, oh, you like, so when we are talking and you know each other and all that fun stuff, he's like, oh yeah, like, are you into wrestling at all? And I'm like, yeah, wrestling's cool, whatever. John Cena, Undertaker, The Rock, yeah. And he's like, no, like, anything else like and I'm like nope all I know is WWE that's all I don't know and he's like so you never heard of death matches I'm like I've heard a celebrity death match on MTV if he's like oh man this is like a whole new world I gotta like show you so um probably like so he gave me the rundown XPW so I already know what XPW was and back like eight years ago uh, there was a, a fed called UEW and, and Supreme was part of them. And he's like, oh my gosh, like I just got in contact with uh, Carnage and Supreme. And so we went and so you're talking eight, eight and a half, nine years ago, maybe a little like sooner, so closer to eight years. We went and that was like the first death match I've actually seen in person. And these guys are just like in just going crazy and supreme's like you know just straight in the open just dashing his head open taking like the light tubes taking the barbed wire taking all this stuff and i'm like oh my god this is so great because like to me i have no like i grew up watching slasher films so like nothing really kind of and being an only child you're all of a sudden like in this enigma of being crazy because it's only you so I've always been like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's so wait, you're an only um, child. We talked about, huh? You're an only child. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. 
so I'm extra crazy so it's like I got nothing just me and my own thoughts so those were my siblings but um but yeah I was like this is awesome so we talked about bringing XBW back but having that infrastructure of it was not there because this is you know after um this is after XBW this is after extreme associates this is after going to prison this is after everything for him so he's been so rob's been so far removed from it and bringing it back was like well how do we do it and um so we always had that cloud surf but wrestling has always been that fun almost taboo thing because it's like when you tell people you like wrestling people are like outside people that are not hardcore wrestling fans either are just like oh like you know the rock and so everything is associated with the attitude era because nobody kind of like me go like is so far removed from it and then you're like no like you know hardcore shit where people are like cutting each other open it's great and you're, people look at you like you need medication like goodbye <laughs> so like it's like a very taboo thing in my opinion when it comes to wrestling because it's like you have what everyone sees on tv every single monday and every single friday is completely different than what anybody else sees and it's a very like people like want to almost like the porn industry where people like want to hold it on and then they start bashing you because they're just like so and you're just like this isn't wrestling what's going on I don't know like you do it then you go in the storylines you do it okay like whatever so yeah that's yeah, it's the, interesting. Uh, my thing of being into wrestling <laughs> I think it's just so sweet I just I feel as though with Rob this is Rob 20.0 um you know, and he's, yeah, I, I feel, I'm just glad he, I always thought that he was too good to be involved in adult and I'm not bashing it. I just thought his creativity was above and beyond that. And, you know, we parted ways and then up, that's the terms, but um, <clears throat> anywho, so <laughs> I adore Rob to death, but uh, I will say this. So you watching the Attitude Era, now we have these gorgeous girls like Camille and those girls bleeding. It's like you guys are given the WWE and AE, what are AES, a, uh, AEW, <laughs> AEW, a freaking run for their money. You do realize that you guys are basically starting these female death matches in California. Whose idea was that? And did you ever think you'd be working around this, like in that capacity? with the xpw women's death match well i think it comes to when you when you kind of you have to put both our minds together so it's like you have to go well what's going on right now in the wrestling world what like death matches for females back in when xpw was first around wasn't a thing it was a thing but it wasn't a thing and it was like well what girl's gonna do it what girl with a pretty face is gonna go out there take a gusset plate to her head and have blood just streaming down and then it's like yeah like it's not a thing but you fast forward 20 years later and then it's like girls are not afraid to be hardcore and girls are not afraid to you know take a gusset plate to their head take a baseball bat to their back take chair shots go through tables go through barbed wire like they're not afraid so it's like let's use it let's do it like you know women can just be as tough as a man so if they're willing to do it that is their that is their willing so it's like let's 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 we're not new to the like we're new to the party but it's like let's do it we gotta do it we started <laughs> okay. the party yeah so I know but it's like when it comes to female death matches it's like we are you know expanding that territory for XPW so we're expanding that that brand for XPW we're expanding it to a whole new side of extreme and it's like fuck it <laughs> oh, it's Let's like incredible. It. No, it's, it's great if 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 a guy can do it why can't a girl do it? That type of, you know, you have to think like that. So, right. I mean, and hardcore is hardcore and 
man, women go through a lot and we can be fucking hardcore. Yeah. So excuse my language. I don't know if we No, can you're allowed to curse. God, I censor me. Like a biker. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, sometimes always like, whoopsie. <laughs> excuse my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some pretty hot looking guys like Big Joe, like that is one hot guy, but his like his head looks like a Chinese roadmap, but at the same time, he's really hot. It's like disgusting. So I told my mom, like she saw the show and she's sitting there. You all need help. Like every single last one, if you need help, because that's very seeking the head and you wonder what it is with fans, but it's just, they don't want to hurt themselves, but they'd rather see each other, like us do it to each other, to one another. And with that said, did you ever think in a million years when you started dating Rob, that you'd be helping him, like you'd be running this company. And how was it like the first day in California for you in Pomona? Like, what was that like? Um, very stressful, but you, but me and Robert work very well together business-wise. We, our team, we've been together for 10 years. And I think when you're with somebody for so long, you know how somebody else's brain works. And if their brain works the same way yours does, then you might as well powerhouse it because that's the only way a relationship in any source is going to work. And I'm very creative. I like to, like, I'm a very like pusher type person. So I like to expand a little bit more. I like to keep the extreme in what we're doing. And if I'm like, the more blood, the better. I don't care. Just make them gush everywhere. Like, I'm like, let's do it. You know, when we um, came back to California, so XBW being back in California, Southern California and Pomona, it's, um, it it was, it was stressful, but it was very um, good stress. Like at the end of the day, you know, like building up to it, you're like, (gasps) but the second you can like, breathe once that everything's going and everything has a smooth flow you're like okay you can center it back down to you know air so it it was it got it got pretty much pretty intense like I think our last so beautiful disaster was a little bit more stressful for me only on a personal front with like being a mom and everything so I was like really missing my kids and it was a little bit harder on me, but I kind of, I had my, you know, my breakdown. Then I was like, okay, I got to get back into game mode. And I was like, let's just do it. Cause I feel sometimes crying will like literally help you like, like get through shit. (laughs) I mean, crying is like a good uh, medication. So I was like, I had to get this out. And then I was like, let's do it. (laughs) So someone that likes death having a psycho breakdown, huh? Color me shocked. (laughs) When's your birthday again? What, what sign are you? I'm I'm a Cancer, so I hold everything in, and it takes one little thing to pop, the, like the balloon to go. Pew! So, yeah, yeah, it does. No. So July you- 9th. I just turned thirty three. It's okay. I I had to accept my age, so I'm like, might as well. <laughs> yeah, I just know so, all the time. It just happens, <laughs> but sometimes it helps. Sometimes being a psycho in a very good moment kind of gets you like where things need to be. So being in Ooh. boss mode and psycho mode at the same time, it's like, let's just do it. <laughs> well, what are the your horns thoughts? are out. Yeah, as long as it comes out. But what are your thoughts overall? Like, I'm curious because you do have a huge hand in this, obviously. And I don't think a lot of people know that. They know that you're just this really pretty little blonde with like a perfect glowing skin, which is really disgusting. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm gonna your fucking eyeballs out. I'm not, I'm not. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they don't, I, I, what are your thoughts on women's wrestling nowadays anyway? Like the stage of it? Because I, I feel like you guys have a happy balance of everything that you are not overdoing it with like all women matches or like half of it, women's matches. It's such a perfect blend. And, you know, I watch other things sometimes and I think it's too much. Well, I think you have to feed the fans. So it has to be a well, it's like having a seven, a five, seven course meal. It's like, you have to start it and start it. And then it's like right there and you get to that that entree and the dessert and you have to make it very suave and make it delicious or it won't like go. 
So I think with women's wrestling, having it and being part of it, it needs to be kind of like that build up. So then it's like, once you get it, you're like, I never knew what I needed this in my life. So I think it's like a well balance. And I think a lot of companies are so like, they have to have it. Like they have to have women's wrestling. We didn't have to have women in XBW. We didn't have to do anything. Like it wasn't forced on us. It's like, we were like, let's fucking do it. Let's just do it. What's it going to hurt? It's not going to hurt anything. And if we don't like it and it doesn't go well, then it is what it is. It's like, you got to test drive it before you buy it. So it's like one of those things. And I think it works. I think, um, you know, I think as long as we have a story behind what is needed, it works. So I'm pretty happy with where we are. And as for everything else, it kind of just, with with it, all the other companies, it does seem a little like we have to have it because this is what, this is what's going to do everything that we need and make everybody happy. It's like, uh. <laughs> so it's so that's my opinion. Yeah. I mean, like I ran a company for a couple of years. I have to tell you, like, I'm so happy. I just don't have to like, I'd much rather just be in front of a camera instead of like behind doing anything like that. Cause that is the most stressful thing. Like dealing with guys later half naked, rolling around together with egos. It's just this thing. I'm like, well, am I really having this conversation with you over like 50 bucks for a plane thing or like the changing a flight? Like I just, I couldn't deal. I'm like, okay, I got to check out. I'm going to go check myself into a mental asylum. And I'm sure there are people that are more sane there and I'll be okay. But, and mm-hmm. when you had, uh, like a lot of people know that you did start in adult, which is great. That's awesome. Because it was in the golden mm-hmm. era, the cool time when it was fun. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's such a transition. And is there anything, like, did you ever think that it would be hard to transition out of that to come into what you're doing now? Like maybe you just wouldn't be as respected or anything like that? Honestly, I don't really, I don't think about that because I am who I am and I'm very, like not, not a narcissist per se, but a narcissist. So it's like, I do things that make me happy. I want to do things that make me satisfied. And if anybody else has an issue with it, I'm like, well, I'm not doing it for you. Like, you're not the one that's, you know, in my bed you're not the one that's paying my bills you're not the one that's feeding me taking care of me I can give two shits I do not care like I I'm a chameleon I kind of just adapt to my habitat and what I see fit is what I see fit like I don't tunnel vision like I don't care about all that other stuff so it's like everything's easy for me I'm like I'm gonna do this I got this I don't care what you think I don't care what that person thinks I'm just me. So that is why I've been with Robert for 10 years because he's the only one that gets me. So I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. It's and he's a- seen it. He's seen me grown, I guess you can say. <laughs> and in a lot of things, well, because it's like, I've been part of that industry since I was 19 years old. Ooh. I met him when I was 22. So you're talking Oh, like you're talking a good 12 years of my life where it's like, I have to really like everything is grown up very fast. So it's, you know, I've had Robert along the way to help me with those transitions to help me with that flourishing aspect of who I am and who I am as a person and growing up because in your twenties, especially when you're 22, you're still baby, you're still young. So it's like, everything's like, I'm going to do it all. And I'm in my best life and I love everything about me and then all of a sudden you're like a piece of humble pie and gotta change shit so it's it's good I need it I need the change constantly or I'm like oh so <laughs> yeah. it's also probably being part of being creative and also an only child I'm an only child so I do this thing all the time and it's all about me Woo! so yes yeah. <laughs> Um, what was life like for you before you even got into that business? Did you go to school for anything or did you, you know, were you working somewhere else before like at Randy's donuts or like, I don't know, bicycle shop? (laughs) No, I, um, 
I don't know. I had like one of those weird mother daughter relationships, um, very estranged with her. Um, and I just didn't really like my upbringing. I didn't really like my childhood. So I, um, when I turned 18 and I was a little bit more independent, I became more independent. When I was 19, I left home. Um, I was a dancer for like a good six months. And one of the girls that I worked with was like new. I, it's so funny because this is how small this world is. So she, the girl I knew used to date Mark Zane, who is Rob Black's cousin. And I had no idea. So I got in talks with Mark Zane. Mark Zane knew an agent. I, I got in talks with agent. I moved, I moved to Florida first. And then I went from Florida to California. Then at some point I met um, Tom Byron. And then through Mark Zane. And then like three years or not even three years like two years later I met Rob and then it's like this whole like oh you met all these people before you met me so it's like so that is my life so that is like the life before entering into the beginning of me <laughs> well where were you where did you grow up I'm from Fort Worth Texas so it's like right outside of Dallas yeah yeah, I always have to say, I'm right outside of Dallas, like outside of, you know, where the Cowboy Stadium is. I'm like in the next town there. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, you have no idea, but it's okay. <laughs> I know where Plano is. It's pretty cool, I guess. Plano, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, I guess, like a watered down version of the Stepford Wives. You know, yeah, everyone I've, has like their Louis Vuitton handbags. They have to have the newest bag and all this other crap. I had a friend that lived there. It was a whole, it was like a fucking shit show, but yeah. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> no plan for me. My hangout was like the, the rocker scene in mm -hmm. Deep Ellum when it was the rocker scene. So I was like a big rocker. I'm still, I'm like yeah. a hardcore, like metal chick. So I, uh, I grew up like with all like, the punkers and the rockers and the goth kids and we all go to the underground rock shows and awesome like that was my my life so um it kind of always stuck with me I always kind of make the joke of like I wanted to be Avril Lavigne when I was growing up <laughs> so just to, and I looked like her for a hot minute like I didn't I wasn't always this right I had my hair was probably a little bit shorter than yours in black uh -huh. And I had like the skater gear on, like I looked like I was looking like I literally was like, she's a god. I want to be just like her. So that was, that was me. <laughs> yeah, but you're more interesting than her. And it's funny because I feel so old looking at that t-shirt because I went to that show, Suicidal Tendencies opened up for Metallica at the Meadowlands Arena. And I was on a date with this guy, right? This is really fucked up you'll appreciate this because we we, all, we like uh, fucked up things always happen and it's it always makes a conversation fun um especially when you can laugh at it like now so i was like 18 and this shit wad cock sucking son of a bitch motherfucker so we'll call him joey big nose because he had a big nose and his name is joe and i got him fired from his law firm like years later um so i went to the show with him we were like dating and he wanted to sit next to this girl who nicknamed herself roach this is how stupid I was like the old me then. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it like knocked her up or something, but it was so weird. And like, she can be the shit below my shoe. Right. So whenever, okay. But it was, it's a great time in my life. Cause that's when I really got into metal even more and more, but I just remember that whole story and it was so funny. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, I met some guy that night who was, uh, he was in a kiss cover band. He looked like Paul Stanley. Yeah, that was like the, the only highlight of it. <laughs> yeah, and I got to see Metallica and Suicidal Tendencies and something, there was some other weird thing. Yeah, it probably wasn't that significant or that weird. Or maybe it wasn't <laughs> weird enough, or maybe it was too weird. So I don't know, it was just something else. But yeah, and I, I'm not going to ask you to name a Metallica song because I see girls like half my age wearing a fucking shirt, like 
a rock show. They don't know any song. I walked up to this guy in the street. He had a carcass t-shirt on. He looked like a fucking nerd, like a total poindexter. He looked like like Chris Kloss, but with glasses. I walked up to him. I said, why are you even wearing that shirt? Like, do you, can you name a song? He's like, Jasmine, I met you years ago. I met you at Carcass. I met you at Suffocation. I'm like, N- you don't, why, why do you look like a nerd? Well, I cut my hair. I had to get a job. I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I know it happens all the time. I remember, like, I I feel like people look at me like that, like that I'm one of those people that wears band shirts, and I'm like, um, no, because I seen Slipknot like this many times, and I seen Metallica, and I was eight months pregnant with my first child, so no, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Mother in it, it's fine. That's awesome. Well, wait, what was your first concert, and how old were you? Oh, my first concert was um in sync at 11 years old but does that even count like yeah it does if you were seeing it no, yes yes in what sync at 11 years old my mom got me tickets is that the so, brothers no that's backstreet i know no no yeah backstreet yeah no i was not a backstreet boys fan i was an insane girl okay bye 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 that was my jam but they were in my first concert and then um, I started getting into rock music around like 12, 13. So I, but kind of eased, eased my way into it. I, uh, listened to what was trendy. So Lincoln Park, Blink-22, yeah. Good Charlotte, because back in the day when magazines were cool and magazines were a thing, there was Spin Magazine and Spin Magazine would give you a CD of five songs and they would be like these new upcoming bands and they talk about them and I would play it. And that's how I got introduced to rock music. Um, because back in the day when CDs were cool and CDs were a thing, there was the um, for your entertainment stores. And I would live my life in those. The FYE, and it'd be like all like these big, like, um, was a big warehouse or it'd be in the mall and you have all these CDs and they had the headphones and then you like click around on the headphones and that'd be me. And I'm like, dude, this is great. And, um, before I came along, my dad was actually a bass player in like local music bands. So like I grew up in rock music. So everything about my life has just been from Beatles to the Rolling Stones to Kiss to ACDC to and then I just kind of expanded any further so then like Slipknot and Lamb of God like I'm a big Lamb of God girl yeah, like that them. was my jam like I remember seeing Lamb of God with um Corn and Census Fail now Census Fail I don't even think they're around anymore unless they are I don't know but that's those were my days and I still listen to that stuff like I can't not listen to it because Today's rock is just not what I grew up on. So no. I'm like, okay, I'll still listen to my 90s, 2000s rock while everybody's like, you don't listen to them. I'm like, I don't know who you're talking about, but okay, good for you. And like, <laughs> so do you. Like, seriously, fucking listen yeah. to sucky ass music. I like, when I lived in Norway for so long, like my first, when I went to Norway, my very first concert when I moved there was Inferno Festival with Ghost. Oh yeah, and I it was like don't get me started like on them. I'm obsessed with it. It was them. amazing. I love them. So I was yeah. working interviewing heavy metal bands, and that was my first Inferno Festival. It was Ghost, um Mayhem. Who else was it? Um Immortal. It was oh awesome. My God. It was like one black metal freaking amazing time. It was like the best time ever. Then the first time I ever saw Enslaved, because I got into real Scandic metal, they did an acoustic, very intimate set at uh Viglund's Park in Oslo they have like all these crazy nude statues and it wait you were in Norway didn't you go with Rob to Norway I wasn't in Norway I went to Paris a few years back but that was Why with my mother were, where were you that was cold well you're upstate years anyway so yeah you're probably somewhere <laughs> no it was Paris <laughs> Paris was pretty chilly yeah. so <laughs> so it was so amazing, but that's where like I ne- like metal doesn't die there. They even have like metal cruises, mm-hmm. and there is nothing sexy about being on board with a bunch of like sloppy um, 
sweaty, like, like metalheads, like they drink to like the Swedish people. Oh, yeah. and it's like barbaric. So when people ask me about this band or that band, it's like, please, you don't no, you can't even name one band from Sweden. You can't name, just don't even talk to me about metal. Cause I know this stuff. Like I sleep on it. Actually, I, t- I went with Rob years ago. I, I took him to Ozfest when uh, Slayer was playing with Rob Zombie. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It was so funny. And like Rob there, it was like the craziest thing seeing, but I knew Rob was into music like that. And, you know, he's cooler now than he was then only cause like you're around, but that's part <laughs> of the piece. Now, is that Rob's shirt or is that your shirt? This is mine. Oh, that's right. Okay. You're eight months this pregnant. This is my shirt. No, I had that. I've had this for a long time. I have tons of uh, vanties. I'm like, I don't know. I I always find it funny when I make fun of people with vanties, but I like wear them all the time. So I don't know. I'm just goofy like that. But um because I used to do the festivals like growing up like that was my thing was um like the rock station they would always have their festival so they would have Freakers Ball and the Freakers Ball was like a two-day a two-day show with like 30 different rock bands with different stages and you'd go and they all had different time frames but they would all be you know separated and that was when I saw Damage Plan, when I saw um, Velvet Revolver, um, Velvet Revolver, Scott Weiland slash Duff, those guys, they did like the power group. Um, oh, who else was there? Shadows. There was, like, one other, there was one other big band. I just can't, don't pop up to me. Was it but, Shadows Fall by any chance? Because they did a tour with Damage Plan before. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. And um, there there was one more. It wasn't Godsmack. Because I would know if I'd seen Godsmack. <laughs> but uh, there was, I, I, I'm so blank on it. But that was like the time of my life. And I remember I had a um, one of my high school best friend. Me and her would always go to all these concerts together. So we would do all the summer festivals. So all those rock shows, uh, the Freakers Ball was taken every, for Halloween, so every October, we saw Slipknot, we saw Corn, um, we saw so much, just so much. Uh, the Use, the Taste of Chaos tour, so you had the Use, My Chemical mm-hmm. Ro- Romance, and they went on tour together. Treyu was pretty, I didn't like a Treyu life. I like them on record, I do not like them live. It, he sounds very weird. Like, I'm just like, sorry, dude, but your voice does not do it for me like it did on this album. So yeah. you did good. not wake up on the right side of the bed to sing this song. I can tell you that. But um, it's funny because I've seen Slipknot. Robert's never seen Slipknot. So when Slipknot came to town back in California, I was like, we got to go. Um, it was Zach Wild, Anthrax and Slipknot and it was the Knot Fest and I'm like we gotta go he's like I've never seen Slipknot before and I'm like I have oh my god something that I've done and you can have it <laughs> and um so I took him and that was a pretty rad effing show yeah it's like such a high introducing someone <clears throat> to like really good music and then they get turned on to it like I once took someone to see Arch Enemy when Angela Gossow was singing. Oh yes, that was the only time they were good. I don't, I don't like I the know. fact that they have a guy singer now. It kind of does not do. Yeah, it for she's me. nice, but she's just yeah, it's different. But like she, like I mean, then it's like then they want to go to more metal shows. Then I will, I showed them Dissection, but at that point, John Nutbeit had already killed himself, so we're not going to see Dissection live anytime soon. Um, <laughs> but it's so much fun turning people onto things. Like at first, I thought maybe. Rob turned you on to wrestling, but it's like, okay, this is great. She's normal or she seems normal for the most part. Um, <laughs> for the most part, we're, yeah. we're a tiny bit. I, I'm on pills, so I'm <laughs> honestly crazy. <laughs> I'm on pills too. I'm on when I feel like taking thyroid medicine, but when I don't, I go woo, woo flying uh-huh. off the rails because I don't want to, um, I don't know. I just forget sometimes. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because one thing I did realize is when I had transitioned out of adult into wrestling, Two things sell, sex 
and violence. You know, this is why they love the cat fights and they like everything else. And I think it's one of the components that made XPW like ECW on steroids. Yeah. In many ways. I think like a lot of places they lack that. Like I liked watching male managers back in the day. Um, I groomed myself after like Miss Elizabeth and Francine (laughs) with the little outfits, you know. Yes. It was want fun. it if you got it <laughs> right because god knows how much longer i'll have it but uh so it's just it's a really it's an enjoyable thing watching you know you do this and watching you do everything and i noticed that you took a different role sitting next to chris Kloss. ill Woo! but yeah so what made you decide to go into commentating oh because i just love like i i'm like one of of those people that commentates anyways like no matter what I'm watching I'm always like why would that person do that like why what is in their head so I am like the witty one I guess you can say and I mean who else is going to help Chris Kloss pronounce people's names properly so yeah exactly so I am not like, shit well he couldn't say one of the wrestlers names he kept calling them something else and I'm like I get it you're pronouncing it how you see it but but no I um I always like that especially when I watch wrestling and Robert kind of makes fun of me and yes only I can call him Robert okay anybody they can't nobody else can call him Robert so but he he always makes fun he's like you are the only one that pays attention to the commentary and I'm like well they actually make sense so I mean of course it's like how can you watch wrestling and not have anybody talking over it and it's fun I like it I like I like seeing it and then comment commentating on it so I'm like the sarcastic witty one because I I remember during the um Schlack and Big Joe match. I made the reference of, look at those guys. They only have faces a mother could love. <laughs> yeah, Chris would not think of and that. And they're like That's covered cool. in blood. And I'm like, yes. That was so scary, by the way. I almost had a heart attack. I see like Schlack's sock. It's red. I'm like, oh, he's a red sock fan. That's cool. Yankees are like way better. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's blood. Yeah, that was like, you got like, you're away from it for a while. Then you get back into it and you see it. And it just kind of hits you at first, like you're on the other side of the um, the barricade, but you're not. And it's just yeah. this whole other thing. And I have a lot of respect for Veronica Kane wanting to get, you know, fucked up. And that's fine. I'll fuck her up. It's not a problem. <laughs> I will like back Misha up 100%, like whatever she wants. But um, it's kind of fun, like, you know, working with Misha as well. And, you know, hopefully having the chance to like work with her and like, you know, give her that psychology and all the um, the makings of what I was brought up with and what I was taught in the ring and just certain things. Because you just, the first time out, you don't really get these things and you don't get like when to slap the mat and why the manager does it. Like there is a psychology behind it, people. You know, I know like yeah. y'all are a bunch of sick fucks and y'all want to watch us beat each other up, but it's a whole other thing. It is. And I think like there, there definitely is, there's an art to deathmatch wrestling there's an art to wrestling as a whole but when you are doing something that is deathmatch and you are in the ring with somebody else you have to trust that person you yeah. have to you know you really have to um step boundaries and step over that line into that other person's you know being and i think i i I mean, I think it's the same as, I mean, Robert always jokes, the same as porn, because porn is a very, you're in somebody's space. You have to know that comfort zone. You have to know those calls. So everything you do has to be a very mechanical type way, because one little mess up, that's it. Like we all seen, we've all seen things happen to these guys. We've all seen, you know, recent things of you know hoodfoot was recently put in the hospital for an incident during that match it's like you can't know but you have to also understand so when people are like oh they should have been more careful 
oh, how can they do that? It's like, you're putting your, you're putting your body up against somebody else's and you're doing things that aren't like the normal norm. So you have to, you have to work with each other. That's the whole point of deathmatch. <clears throat> it's the whole point of wrestling in general. Like I watched that money in the bank show. Yeah. And there was a couple spots where you're like, oh, they so messed up. Like, how do you do that? Like, oh, <laughs> So it's like, I catch myself, but at the same time, I'm like, whatever, nobody else sees it. But besides us, they're so worked up by adrenaline, the crowd. And secondly, anything can happen. You know, I've been, I've been thrown around by guys that were slippery with grease and I don't really get knocked on my fucking head guys that may have been fucked up before a match. Okay. Yeah. Great. You're going to go ahead and slam me here or there. You're doing what? <laughs> no. But um, yeah. it's a risk, like from every <clears throat> way possible and uh you know this i felt really bad for hoodfoot because he's a very likable human being as well um and your only fans what's on your only fans and how could people actually find you on only fans if they want to subscribe Woo. Oh, well i can't say what's on my only fans oh. they're gonna have to sign up and figure out what's on my only fans um but what is my only fans <laughs> hold on because i have like four different variations oh, oh it's my- just cat martini <laughs> My bad. It's just Kat Martini. Yes, that's it. Because I'm like, I have, because my Instagram is Miss Kat Martini and my uh, Twitter is um, Kat Martini XPW. So I'm like, which name is this? (laughs) You gotta get all my links and just get with that. (laughs) Yes, I know. I know. But, but yeah, my OnlyFans is spicy, but they're going to have to figure out how spicy when they sign up for it <laughs> yeah so you guys need to like shout out the money because red means green so like extreme wrestling fans you know i know you guys like to invest money and spend it so you guys need to do it like get on that shit right away like now or i'll whip you but what do you see for as far as like other creative projects from Ms. Kat martini aside from uh from XPW, like I could see you recreating all those old Giallo movies from Italy, uh, like Bloody Iris with Edwidge Fennec. I could see you like doing that, but yeah, what do you have planned anyway? Um, well, I have in the works where I'm basically doing like an education, like happy hour with Cat Martini, where I watch old XPW death matches and like review it. So it's like me being educated on the arts and uh the making of deathmatch so i have that um i told robert a couple uh a few months ago that i um wanted to do a horror film based around xpw and he's like all right let's do it (laughs) and i'm like okay he's like put it together because i um write and I do a lot of writing, journaling and writing. And I have like this mind that's like nonstop. So I'm like, every idea that I have, I have it written down. And I'm like, I am more morbid as I get older. So this is going to be fun. <laughs> so like, imagine um, Stephen King characters, like had a daughter, I'd be that daughter. So that's better, way better, way better. <laughs> well, that's the way most things are done is like, you just get up. I do it sometimes too. I get up in the middle of the night when I have an idea, like I wrote my book, but it's not really finished um, because I'm still living this whole weird kind of fame. But I wrote my one woman show. It was like 84 pages and it's down to 24. So it's like, I I get up in the middle of the night, like remembering because like, oh shit, I should put this in there. No, I shouldn't. Okay, wait, do I have to put this audio visual in it? Like, what do I do? So it's just, it's a really good process. Yeah, just let me know how many lines I have in the film. Um, But (laughs) anyway, yeah. I know. Well, you know, it's funny because I actually told Robert that he should let me write his um, his biography. And I always joke with him. I'm like, we should just do XBW present, like presents like the biopic of Rob Black. Because I'm yeah. like, I already know who I want to play you. I already know who's going to play this person and that person. It's going to be great. And he's like, oh my God, it's wrong. You got to do it. Or like an XPW coffee table book. <clears throat> Because there are a lot of I told- in that. Because like you have all the Damien Steele. <laughs> I'll say this. Like, I love managing the champions. Like, champions are the best. You know, because yeah. deathmatch guys, they can, like, go at any second. But that's fine, too. But um, 
I know I shouldn't say that, uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's all fun stuff. And I remember back in the day, those are such classic photos, like standing there in the ring with Damien Steele, Nicole Bass and Big Dick Dudley. And both of those were, you know, they're two of my favorite people and they're dead. But I mean, there's so many moments there, like off the scaffolding, um, like everything from the so-called inception. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I could totally yeah, and you know, I, uh, well, I'm actually, I gotta, like, go through the pictures, um, but we are going to put together a XPW 2023 calendar, Ooh. so we're gonna have that hopefully by October, so then come the next show, we'll have, so the show after this, we'll have the um, calendar is available so we're gonna be doing that um and every day with this brain of mine I have something new that's like we should do this <laughs> and so we should we should totally yes. do it it's a shame like I don't know what Rene Dupree is doing he was in the WWE the French Connection I know he's in Canada I don't know if he's wrestling or anything like that but he was um I was on his podcast and I think I did part of it in French and I forgot like you're putting this out to freaking Americans and here we are like babbling away in a totally different language, but it's okay. I don't give a fuck. Um, do you see, so I'm hoping that maybe they do a bus trip from uh, LA to like Pomona. So I've been speaking to your executive producer about that to make yeah. it happen. Bus trips are wild, man. I mean, it's a bunch of wrestling fans hanging out and bonding and talking about this. And it's like, I think wrestling brings people together. All subcultures bring the coolest people together. That is a subculture. Porn is a subculture, heavy metal. Mm -hmm. So you have it like all here under this one roof. And you know, y'all are geniuses. So whatever you're going to do next, I know it's going to be super, super good. But what I would like to do is I would like to get all of your socials and I will put them out there. So please um, give us all your socials, Miss Martini. Miss Martini. Yeah. Ms. Martini. Yes. My... Um... My Instagram is Miss Cat Martini. So you're going to have it typed out, but you never know. There's always that one person. It's like, is it with a C or a K? And it's with the K. <laughs> and my Twitter is Cat Martini underscore XPW. And that is all I have. And then, of course, my OnlyFans, which is Cat Martini. <laughs> and she'll have an all my links like soon, at least by the end of the next show, because I'll make her set it up. It takes like two seconds. And then you'll have all of her links and you'll all see what she's doing. It's perfect. I'm so excited. I popped your podcast, Cherry. Yes, I know. The first Cat Martini uh, interview. It's no one's going to be as cool. Trust me. So it's no. like, like this ever. No, everything's going to be like all about Rob. <laughs> right like what the fuck that's the thing yeah. everybody wants to know what rob is like and i'm I, like yeah. he's great he is he's great he's chill and because it's like people are like is he really as crazy as he is on tv and i'm like yes he's the exact same person okay that is why we are together <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so. you got to keep it in control with him. I mean, when we were in Brazil, it was a whole fucking like I I remember those days like distinctly, you know, with Rob and like it was a fun time, but <laughs> I was really shit faced. And I think I took some um, I don't know something happened. But yeah, so um, like at the nightclub with these people, I uh, it blacked out. But yeah, so um, <clears throat> he threw my then boyfriend out of Brazil. He kicked him out and he sent him home because he he was doing some stupid shit. And it was really funny when Rob kicked him and sent him back home. You want me to send him back home? Please. Yeah. Go back to LA. Just yeah. go and don't fucking work here again. I'm like, yeah, you go. But yeah, Rob's an amazing person, people. And, you know, if you are going to interview Kat and when you do, don't make it all about him because she's her own entity. And like <laughs> behind most awesome guys are awesome women. More, yeah. uh, more of an awesome person, which is me. <laughs> stellar no but rob is a good dude and he's a he's great to work with he's great to work for yeah. so not discrediting my husband but at the same time i'm like everybody wants to know about you <laughs> as my cat like moves everything ends up no no oh he keep mine keeps shoving behind me so <laughs> and so exactly. what, what i thought oh. i thought i was like i was for uh for sure that claw was gonna like pop yeah. his claw come here 
now. Don't see, I, I can't do that well. I'm not. No, no, no. At the end of the show, we're calling our cats. <laughs> meow, meow. Oh, oh, he's just like looking at me, like, "What are you doing?" I'm not crazy. Don't worry, it's good. I'll, I'll give you treats after. So this, okay. So everyone listening, this Saturday, XPW returns to Pomona, California, August thirteenth, and um, we have a ton of great matches that night. Uh, if you're not going to be at the show, make sure you get it on Fight TV. That's F I T E. What match are you looking forward to Saturday? All of them. I knew you were going to say that. Okay. <laughs> and do you have any messages for the fans? Keep fucking rocking. Okay. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Keep rocking with your, um, Keep rocking with your cock out or something <laughs> if you have one, or if it has, if it's not, has, it's not been cut off. Keep rocking with your cock out, and yeah, we'll um stay crazy, make America yes. sick again. <laughs> yeah. Extreme, extreme. <laughs>